Hi friends! How are you today? I don't know if you remember, but if you watched Storytime last week, we talked about what we were going to talk about this week. Do you remember? Oh, well we started the idea last week and we're going to continue it this week. If you haven't been to Storytime before, my name is Miss Lisa and I am from More Than Tim Park location. All right, our first story today. Oh, I forgot to say what we're talking about. We're going to continue talking about kindness. Remember we said it's a really, not a hard idea, but it's very hard to do, isn't it? It's hard to be kind to people sometimes. Sometimes it's really easy to be kind to people, but sometimes it's a little bit harder. Kindness is when you take care of somebody else and you care more about how they're doing than about how you're doing. You wanna make sure that they're doing okay. All right, so we are going to talk about kindness a little bit, and we're going to start with a story called A Sick Day for Amos McGee. And this is by Philip C. Stead, and it's illustrated by Aaron E. Stead. All right, this is a beautiful book. I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell how pretty the illustrations are this way, but we'll see what we can do. All right, and it's from Roaring Press. Ready? Amos McGee was an early riser. Every morning when the alarm clock clanged, he swung his legs out of bed and swapped his pajamas for a fresh pressed uniform. Now, Mr. Amos McGee has what a lot of us would consider a dream job. Are you ready? He would wind his watch and set a pot of butter to boil saying to the sugar bowl, a spoonful for my oatmeal, please, and two for my teacup. Belly full and ready for the work day, he ambled out the door. Look at his cute little house. Every day, Amos waited for the number five bus. Next stop, City Zoo, the bus driver would call. 6 a.m., right on time, he'd reply. Amos had a lot to do with the zoo, but he always made sure to visit his good friends. He would play chess with the elephant, who thought and thought before making a move. Run races with the tortoise, who never ever lost. Sit quietly with the penguin, who was very shy. Lend a handkerchief to the rhinoceros, who always had a runny nose. And at sunset, read stories to the owl, who was afraid of the dark. One day, Amos awoke with the sniffles and the sneezes and the chills. So he's not feeling very good. He swung his achy legs out of bed, curled them back again, and said, Oh, I don't think I'll be going to work today. Mm. Meanwhile, at the zoo, the animals waited for their friend. The elephant arranged his pawns and polished his castles. The tortoise stretched his legs and limbered up. The penguin sat patiently, all by himself. The rhinoceros worried that his allergies were worsening. The owl perched atop a, a tall stack of storybooks, scratching his head with concern. Where is Amos, the animals wondered. They're all waiting for their friend. Later that day, what are they doing? Is this a real story, do you think? Probably not. Oh, where are they all at now? They're waiting at the bus stop. And now what happened? Are they riding the bus? Now do you think it's a real story? No. Hooray! My good friends are here. Where did they go? Is that what you thought they were doing? They went to go visit Amos, didn't they? The elephant prepared a game of chess. Amos thought and thought before making a move. I'm too tired to run races today, said Amos to the tortoise. Let's play hide and seek. The tortoise hid inside his shell and Amos hid beneath the covers. Those are good hiding spots, aren't they? Amos yawned. Oh, I could use a nap. 
The penguin sat quietly, keeping Amos' feet warm. Achoo! Amos awoke with a sneeze. The rhinoceros was ready with a handkerchief. They're all taking care of their friend, aren't they? They are being very kind. I'm beginning to feel much better, thank you, said Amos to his friends. He swung his legs out of bed. Perhaps we'll share a pot of tea. Amos wound his alarm clock. It's getting late, he said. After all, we have a morning bus to catch. So Amos said good night to the elephant, and good night to the tortoise, and good night to the penguin, and good night to the rhinoceros, and good night to the owl, who, knowing that Amos was afraid of the dark, read a story aloud before turning out the light. <gasps> Look at them all. All right. Well, we know that that is not a story that would really happen, is it? No. Nope. Sad to say the animals from the zoo are not going to come to your house when you have a sick day. I know. That would be pretty exciting, but I bet it would smell a lot like fish. Mm -hmm. So, we know that our friends aren't going to come visit us from the zoo. But, in the story, they went to visit a friend who is sick. And right now, we're really not doing that, are we? When a friend is sick, we're trying to stay away to help ourselves stay healthy. But there are still things you can do to help them feel better. Even if you can't go visit them, you could you could play a game over the internet. You could play a game through a video call or something like that. So there are still ways that you can play with friends and read books to friends like I'm reading to you right now. It's just not going to be quite the same as they did in the story. Another thing that happened in the story that we don't want to do right now is how did I sneeze when I sneezed as Amos McGee? Oh, I sneezed like this, didn't I? Is that how we want to sneeze? No, we don't want to get all of those germs Germs are the things that go from person to person and make us sick. We don't want to get all those germs on our hands because then when we go to open a doorknob or shake someone's hand or turn off a light switch, we're going to be putting those germs on all of those things, aren't we? Now, when we cough or sneeze, we want to cough or sneeze into our elbow. So you'll go like this because have you ever opened a doorknob with your elbow like this? Probably not. Do you ever turn off the light switch with the inside of your elbow? Probably not. Nope. So when we sneeze into our elbow, we get our germs trapped right here, which means we're less likely to give our germs to other people and make them sick too. All right. So that was our a sick day for Amos McGee. And I have a song for you so we can practice how to sneeze. This is called The Sneezing Song and it's by Jim Gill. And I hope you enjoy this one. I'm trying to play actual music this time instead of just singing acapella because when I sing acapella, you never know where I'm gonna start. So we'll see what happens this way. Please and Mr. Jim Gill said we can use all of his songs. All right. Black Eyed Peas, you. Oh, he's slower than me. No, <laughs> Or if, if you feed me black eyed peas, guess what's gonna happen? I'll have to sneeze. Everybody go. Are you ready? Uh, 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 into the elbow. Uh, Good job. Please don't feed me macaroni and cheese. See how that rhymes with sneeze? You know what they do. Ready? Or if you feed me macaroni and cheese. Oh no, here we go again. I have to sneeze. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, can you think of something else? Chocolate chip cookies. You know what they will do. For if you feed me chocolate chip cookies, I'll have to sneeze. Are you ready? Uh, 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 Great.
at that. And that's lots of good practice. It's sneezing into our elbows, isn't it? Okay. Let's see. What else did we want to do? I know. I have a story about being a good friend. Oh, but it seems like it might be a little bit scary at first. So I want you to know this is not a scary story and it's going to be okay. All right. Do you trust me? We've got this. Okay, this story is called Leonardo the Terrible Monster. But guess what? He's terrible because he's not good at being a monster. He's not terrible because he's super scary. Okay, and this is from Mo Willems, our friend. All right, and it is also a Hyperion Press, I believe. Oh, yep, there it is. All right, Leonardo was a terrible monster. Thank you. He couldn't scare anyone. Oh, look. He didn't have 1,642 teeth like Tony. That's a lot of teeth. And it says here, not all teeth pictured. He wasn't big like Eleanor. I love how fancy Eleanor is. I always need to point that out when I read this story. And he wasn't just plain weird like Hector. Leonardo tried very hard to be scary, but he just wasn't. One day, Leonardo had an idea. He would find the most scaredy cat kid in the whole world and scare the tuna salad out of him. Leonardo researched until he found the perfect candidate. Sam. Leonardo snuck up on the poor, unsuspecting boy. I'm going to be a little scary here, just so you know. And the monster gave it all he had. Until... The little boy cried. Yes, cheered Leonardo. I did it. I finally scared the tuna salad out of someone. Is that kind? It's not kind, you're right. No, you didn't, snapped Sam. Oh, yeah, replied Leonardo. Then why are you crying? Uh-oh. I have a lot of words on the next page. Are you ready? Okay. Sam's going to explain why he's crying. <gasps> my mean big brother stole my action figure right out of my hands while I was still playing with it. And then he broke it on purpose. And it's my favorite toy. And I tried to fix it, but I couldn't. And I got so mad that I kicked the table and I stubbed my toe on the same foot that I hurt last month when I accidentally slipped in the bathtub after I got supper. My eyes trying to watch out the bird poo that my brother's cockatoo pooed on my head. And I don't have any friends and my tummy hurts. Have you ever had one of those days? Yeah. Sometimes when one thing goes wrong, it makes everything else feel like it's gone wrong too, doesn't it? That's why. Hmm. Well, that's a lot of reasons to be sad, isn't it? What do you think Leonardo could do here? Hmm? Do you have any ideas? Here we go. Maybe now you can see the book. What could Leonardo do? to help his friend feel better. What can he do for Sam? Then Leonardo made a very big decision. Instead of being a terrible monster, he would be a wonderful friend. And look what's he doing. He's giving that friend a hug. And he says, it's okay. Now, some friends might not want to hug. Sometimes your brothers or sisters or your mom and dad, they might not want to hug. They might want a little bit of space and that's okay. So we should probably double check and see what they want us to do to help them feel better before we do it. Oh, look at that. Does he look like Leonardo helped him feel better? I think so too. Oh, but that didn't mean he couldn't try to scare his friend every now and then. Boo! 
Oh, and look at Sam chasing him. Oh, great job with that story. I hope you liked that one too. Let's see, we are going to do a, another quick song from Jim Gill. We're gonna do our one from the left that we've been working on, but we're gonna go ahead and try it with music again. Let's see how we do. Uh-oh. This one has a fantastic video on jimgill.com that you can play with some really cute hand motions. Are you ready? This is One from the Left by Jim Gill. And right now they're all just waving at me. One, one from, from the, the left, left and one, one from the right, right met in the, in the middle and danced all night. They, they made, made up the dance, dance called Wooty Doo. Waved goodbye and, and walked away. Those two. Good job. We're gonna do one, and now we're gonna do two, two from, from the left, left and two, two from, from the right. right. They met, met in the middle and danced all night. They, they made, made up a dance, dance called Snips, Snips Galore. Galore. Like scissors, get it? Then and they waved goodbye. goodbye. And walked away those four. Isn't it better with the music? I know. It's a cute song. Ready? What's next? One, two. Three from the left and three from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called the finger mix. Oh, can you mix them together? Good job. Can you go faster? Then they waved goodbye and walked away. Oh, six. Oh, what's next? We did one, two, three. I think you know. Four from the left and four from the right. They met, met in the middle and danced all night. They, they made up the dance, dance called Bend and Straight. straight. I'm doing it wrong. Right. Then they waved goodbye and walked away. Those eight. Good job. Oh, what do we have now? Did you bring all ten fingers to Five from the left and five, five from, from the right. right. They met, met in the middle and danced all night. They, they made, made up a dance, dance called clap, clap and clap and clap and clap, clap, and clap again. Then they waved goodbye and walked away. All ten. Let's count those again, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good job. All right. Oop, I almost stopped at the wrong thing. There we go. You did such a great job with that song. I love doing that one. Mr. Jim Gill made all of his stuff available online too, so you can ask, I think if you just ask Alexa, she can play some of his stuff, and you can look it up on YouTube too. He's been doing a lot of things for us while we're all at home, staying safe. All right, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to remind you of a book we read a couple weeks ago. I'm not gonna read this one to you again, but I just want you to remember how beautiful this book is if you plant a seed. And it's from Kadir Nelson. And I want to make sure we remember. Do you remember what happened in this story? We did it during our gardening week. And sometimes, friends, did you know that when we just look at the pictures and we talk about what's happening in the story, do you know what that's called? That's called a picture walk. Yeah. And that's a fantastic way to explore a new story. So grown-ups, if you have somebody who's just working on those reading skills and they know a story pretty well, you can walk through and just ask them what they think is going to happen. So do you remember what were they doing? They were planting a seed and then they waited. And after a bit, their seeds grew into plants, didn't they? Oh, and they were yummy, yummy. And then what happened? The birds came. My favorite illustration. Yeah, they wanted some snacks, didn't they? And do you remember? Did the animals share? They didn't, you're right. And then, oh no, it turned into a big giant fight and they lost all of their food. 
except this one beautiful cherry tomato. Yep. You could tell your grown up what's happening in the story too. You don't need me to tell them, do you? You've got it. And then, oh, what happened to the cherry tomato? Where'd it go? The bird boop, flew away with it. A picture walk is easier to do when the book is in front of you. It is. Yeah, it's hard to do this way because you can't see all the pictures as well. But look at that. Then the birds came back and dropped all those seeds. And then in my garden, I call these volunteers when things just start to grow that I didn't plant. Look at that. It's a much bigger volunteer garden, isn't it? Yep. And now they can share with everybody because they have plenty of food. So when they were kind to one another, it worked out better for everybody, didn't it? I wanted to make sure that we remembered that story, but I didn't necessarily want us to take the time to read the whole thing because I had one other book I wanted to do. All right, let's see. Oh, do you remember Little Monkey Calms Down? And it's by Michael Dahl, and it's in the same family as this one. These are the Hello Genius books. I really like almost all of them. There's one where a pony spits when he eats or when he's brushing his teeth. That's not my favorite. I like all the other ones though. This is called Little Lion Shares. Little Lion likes to play. But Little Lion does not like to share. Grrr. Should have warned you before I growled, huh? Mine, mine, mine! Does that sound familiar? Mm, I've heard some mine at my house. You must learn to share, little lion. You can take turns. That means that one of you might take a break while the other one is playing with the toy you hunt. And then, when I used to teach preschool, we would sometimes set a timer and we would say, how many minutes until you're ready to switch? And then we would go back and forth. So friends, a lot of the times would say, I want two more minutes with this toy. And we had a limit, like five or 10 minutes. And then the friend would wait two minutes. And then when their time was up, they'd switch. You can play with something else. So if somebody else is playing with the toy you want while you wait, you can do something else or you could just decide to do something else first. You can play together. That's a fantastic idea. If you both want the same toy, maybe you can switch it back and forth and play together. And then everyone has a fun time. So Little Lion shared something special with his mama. Oh, he's going to share. What do you think he's going to share with his mama? A big smile. Roar! Oh, that, I really like the idea of giving you a couple options for how to share because sometimes sharing is a really hard idea. It takes us a while to get good at it. That's why last week, almost all of our stories were about sharing, weren't they? We didn't talk much about any other ways to be kind because when we're younger, one of the biggest ways to be kind is sharing. Yep. So we have a few ideas of ways that you can show kindness at home. Now, when we read A Stick Day for Amos McGee, they went to go visit Amos, didn't they? And we can't go visit our friends who are sick right now. So what could we do instead? I was thinking about it. And one of the things I came up with was that you could make a card and mail it to somebody that you love that might be feeling sick. If you don't know anybody who's feeling sick right now, grown-ups, you could make cards with your friends and send them to nursing homes um, or other assisted living facilities where they might not be getting as much mail right now um, and they can't have visitors. So if you can, try to think of ways that you can send cards or do nice things for people who might not be feeling good right now. Let's see, another idea I had was when we read blocks last week, I talked about you could build a big block tower with someone in your house. That's a great way to work on sharing and working together. I was also thinking that if you had any pipe cleaners in your house, uh, I finally found some, actually I made my daughter find some, um, you could make a pipe cleaner person. Have you ever made a pipe cleaner person? 
let me show you how to do it really quickly, just in case you need help. All right, so we are going to find the middle by matching up the bottoms. Whoop. And then I'm gonna put my finger in here and twist to give it a head. All right, see how it's turning into a pipe cleaner person already? Okay, and then I'm going to give it another twist to give, oh, arms, and then I'm gonna bring those back and give them a twist. Urgh. And then twist the belly together to make a torso. There we go, torso is that middle part that holds all your stuff together. All right, and now I'm gonna give them little feet at the end where it splits. Look at that, pipe cleaner person. If you don't feel like making a pipe cleaner person, you probably have some things around that you could pretend to be people. Yep. But what I was thinking you could do with these is that you could make two pipe cleaner people and you can have them practice sharing because when we role play, which is what we're doing when we act it out with something else, it helps us develop our skills. Because sometimes when somebody else wants our toy and we don't want to share it, we might be in a place where we just can't think about what we should do to be kind. But if we practice it when we don't really have that emotional attachment, so we're not super worked up already, we can work it out with our friends and practice that way. And then when something happens and we are feeling very emotional and we have those big feelings like we talked about a few weeks ago, then if we've practiced it, we already know what to do and we have the skills. Now, sometimes it might still be really hard to use those skills and that's okay because guess what? As one of my story time friends said this week, I'm human and I make mistakes and I'm proud of that. So we're going to keep practicing and we're going to keep getting a little bit better all the time, but we're still going to make mistakes and that is okay. Jace, I miss you. I really liked that story. Okay, so then I was also thinking if you don't have pipe cleaners um, and you just don't have anything that you can act out as people, like any little people or anything, uh, well, let's say you don't have any toys at your whole house, which I bet you have some toys, but let's say you don't have any toys at all. Do you have spoons? Because your spoons could be people or pencils could be people. My kids make people out of pretty much anything. So you don't have to make the pipe cleaners to practice your role playing. Um, Grownups, if we're really having a hard time sharing, practicing sharing back and forth with you is a great idea. If they have siblings that they can practice sharing with, that's even better. It's a lot easier for you if they can practice with somebody else. Um, if you need to, you can set timers and try to work on it that way. But sharing is hard. It's a hard concept. It takes time, it takes practice, and it takes making mistakes. And that is okay. I think that's all of my ideas for today. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week, that you are kind to the people you're around, and that you take care of each other. I love you and I miss you. I hope I'll get to see you sometime.